Hey guys, how's it going? Phil Quo here, uh, with another tier list, this time a little later in 2.4. Uh, today's the 24th of February. So, let's start off, begin with, uh, just go over a few things, because it's been a while. Uh, these are all kind of assumed to be even levels. Uh, nothing like super whaley, so like th le 3, level 4. Uh, I might have to start looking at level 5, but I think most people have 3, 4 heroes. Uh, maybe with 1 or 2 fives, but... Most of the heroes that you're going to want to be playing are probably around level 3 and 4. So that's why I kind of have it here. As in, like, if we did it, like, max rank. Uh, guys like Kylo with his easy button rage at level 6 would probably be super high. Um... Uh. Did that by accident. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind when going over this. Like, some guys that have higher levels are going to be a little bit better than other guys that don't. Uh, also, like, certain guys at higher levels uh, end up doing a little bit better than, say, like, Bodhi, who doesn't really skill up as well as certain guys. Um, but first of all, let's get into it, I guess. Uh, first, we're going to start with Rebels. Um, for Rebels, I find right now there's, like, three major groups in Rebels. Uh, there's the S tier, which are, like, crazy good. Uh, A and B tier, which are actually, are pretty decent, uh, but just not near S tier. Uh, the difference between A and B isn't that much, and then you got C and D, where it's a pretty big difference between these guys and the rest of them. So, first we'll go over that. Um... First up, we start with Padme. Um, one of the... That didn't even work. There we go. One of the biggest things uh, I find with Light Side is there's three top heroes. And to be honest, it's almost preference which ones are one, two, three. Uh, but for me, I'm going to have Padme at number one. Um, just because... I'll get up her sit bonus here. Um, one, she's, with Typho, well, Typho's really tanky too, but with Typho, she's super tanky on her clone, and she just does shit ton of damage, uh, with her passive and her, uh, set bonus. Everything just has tons of damage. Uh, you can defend a lot with just Typho and her clones. Um, so, I know most people are gonna know her with ATRTs kind of thing. Especially you get the set bonus from the ATRTs, which is pretty crazy. Um, so, basically she just does so much damage behind like heavier things. So like, with Bantha and ATRTs, uh, she can just sit back and just do tons of damage. And there's not really too many ways of dealing with it, right? Because Bomber... Bomber doesn't clear Clone or Typho, so you kind of have to use it on him in the first place. But you still have to get extra damage in. Uh, so she's really hard to kill. Sometimes you don't even know which one wants a real one. So that can also make it super hard to kill for her. So basically, tons of damage. Uh, Typho even has an AoE attack. It's kind of crazy. I think it's basically just like Thrawn's. But, like, him following her around, preventing, like, 25% damage. Him also getting a giant damage buff from her passive. Um, it's just insane. It's just, like, all the damage you want behind super tanky units. Uh, next up, we have Forty Luke. Um, again, he's just really good at protecting big units. Uh, he does... Fair amount of damage now is melee attack. Uh, his ability is really good at the moment against, like, uh, dark side meta. Uh, especially against Maul. It's like as soon as Maul drops his unique, you just push it all the way. Uh, you can do some really fun stuff with this special as well. And you just jump around and do all this stuff. Plus, he's got a range attack. So if you don't really want to dive in, you can just start pegging people. It doesn't do that much damage, but it's still there compared to some other uh, melee heroes. Uh, 
but like everybody knows what Foy Luke does. He just got a damage buff. Uh, a lot of people run adrenaline with him. He goes crazy. Uh, biggest downside why Forty Luke isn't higher is because for me is because he's super hard to get. Uh, he also is lacking unique, but like ATRTs are basically is unique. He's super good at protecting them even with the lower health. Uh, he does tons of damage to tech, and that's kind of why he's here. Cause like he does tons of damage to tech, but it's basically almost the same as what Padme gives to everything. Or at least all organics, which is pretty insane. Um, next up, oh, we got Ray, who I know I don't think a lot of people will agree with me having her third, but I think she is um, one because a lot of people are running a whole bunch of tech, so just to count her ability. So it ends up being uh, a trade on. It's basically if they have organics, I think Ray's a little bit better. But if it's all tech, Forty Luke's a little bit better. Uh, but everybody knows Ray. She, her ability to take over stuff is just super strong. Basically, it changes the whole meta. We have to use like basically all tech, which really sucks sometimes. Uh, a lot of people are running Millennium Falcon with T70. I'm not a big fan of that, but even though like T70 gives her a set bonus too. Uh, set bonus is okay. I know a lot of people will think it's strong. Uh, reduces damage. It's probably one of the better ones. I'd probably say it's third. I think uh, Galactic Republic's probably the start strongest, and then maybe the Separatists over that one. But it's personal preference. Um, the problem with Ray though is. All these other guys that are super strong can be just changed with numbers, but the whole, like, the reason why she's strong is her ability, and it really sucks sometimes. You can't play what you want. Um, so basically, those three, though, could probably be in any order, uh, depending on who you face or who you're playing as. Uh, so I'm not gonna, like, argue if somebody's like, yo, oh, Ray should be number one over Padme. It's like, these basically are all kind of three the same. It's just how I cho chose to order them. Uh, and finally, end of S tier, uh, I have Finn. Even without Rose, like, you don't even have to use Rose. Well, I know a lot of people use it with ATRT. Like, he's just so versatile. Uh, he does tons of damage. And also, again, he's got the nice set bonus for all his organics. If he wants to go that way. Or the set bonus for the ATRTs with uh, Rose protecting them as well. Um, the reason why I don't think he's in the top three is he's just not as efficient as the other guys. Uh, he kind of lacks AOE, uh, like 40 Luke has. Uh, he's not as durable as, like, Padme. He doesn't do as much damage. And he just doesn't have a broken ability, like, uh, Raze. I think he's pretty good. Like, he's just good overall. He's got lots of options you can use with him. So, he's up here in S tier. Uh, next we have A tier, which I think is a fair step lower than all the S tier guys. Um, but first we'll start out with Han. Um, I think I have Han a little bit highly more rated than most people, but I still think he's really good. Uh, the crit chance is pretty, can be game breaking. Uh, getting a couple crits in a row is tons of damage. Uh, his mind is always going to be super strong as long as you're good at placing it. Just does so much damage and the mini stun's huge. Um, I really like Chewy. I know a lot of people don't play with him, but I think he's really good in the meta right now. Uh, taunting things off your tower that are just diving is pretty big. It kind of sucks that he doesn't have any AoE on him, but you can just make it up with a mine or having certain AoE guys. Which helps out. So for me, not much has changed with Han. Uh, next up, we have Yoda. To be fair, I don't know. I had a tough time deciding if Yoda should be A or B. But I think right now, without uh, 
a whole bunch of like organic stuff running around, uh, organic killer stuff on dark side running around. It's not as bad. Like I don't think you could really use ATRTs and mace together. It just ends up clumping up your hand too much. Um, mace is really good though with all the tech stuff. You drop it on the middle of them and it does tons of damage. Um, the biggest problem with Yoda is double-edged sword of the dodge. Sometimes you want to die and you can't die. It really annoys me, but like him being able to dodge a whole bunch of stuff really helps out. And if you can get some key dodges, uh, he can just basically win games right there. I think that's kind of why I have him in A tier rather than B. Is just more often than not, dodge is going to help you than hurt you. Uh, he does more damage. Uh, his ability is a little bit better now. It's nice for all those tech units. You drop mace, you drop his ability, it basically wipes out a nice push, but... He's kind of an all-or-nothing kind of guy, so it kind of hurts him a little bit in the end. As If you don't dodge stuff, he's super squishy. You kind of get wrecked. Uh, next up, we got Jin, uh, who kind of dropped down from S tier. Just because... One, because all the tech running around, so Pow isn't as good. He's still good against leaders, but... I still think Jin's really good. She's just not S tier at the moment. Uh, super high target melee. Uh, single target damage. Snipe's still super strong. And with the addition of more and more ranged units, uh, her passive is actually really good as well. Um, the problem is it doesn't work on melee, and you kind of want some tank dudes. But, and she doesn't have AoE, so that's why she's down here. Uh, next up, we got Kenobi. New hero. Um, Kenobi doesn't have the greatest DPS. Start off with, but like... The thing I find with Kenobi is you're not really using him for DPS. You're just trying to take up as much damage as you can with him. And kind of display stuff. It's kind of like 40 Luke, but just not as good. One, because I don't think he has, like, what's the DPS? 178 compared to, like, 167. Uh, he doesn't have an AoE attack. Uh, it's really nice for his passive, uh, the higher you get. But... One big thing is I really hate Cody. Like, I know people use him. But I think he's just a waste. Um, I think, more or less, he kinda... It's just too easy to clear with, like, a Sand Trooper or a Bomber, and you'll just lose energy. Um, but again, one thing that's going uh, Kenobi's way is he has a great set bonus. Everything does so much damage. Uh, one of the big problems with Kenobi, I find, is that his taunt, people can still use their special through it. Which, so, if you don't actually get pressed the second part of his, spe uh, his uh, smash, it doesn't go off, which is a big killer for him. Because if you get the place, like, you basically, as soon as you see the bomber thing come out, you have to use his ability. Which kind of wrecks it sometimes, because you don't want to use it as quickly as possible, but... Um, a lot of guys, like Callus, uh, Maul... Can use their abilities through it, the taunt as well. So it kind of screws you up there. So you kind of, sometimes you kind of have to wait to use his ability until they use theirs. Which kind of hurts them. I just don't think he. I don't know what the best way to describe it is. He's just not as versatile, I think, as the top guys. Uh, you kind of have to play to your strengths. Uh, and he's decent against the meta right now, but I don't think he's S tier. He's pretty close, but he definitely falls in the A tier category. Uh, especially because Cody's balls. <laughs> I know people are arguing about that, but I just don't really like Cody at all. Uh, next up, we have Baze. Um, this come, might come as a slight surprise, because a lot of guys that I usually have higher up fell. Um, I was debating between him and Lando moving. But I think Baze is strong, he's got tons of AoE. 
on his kit with Sharut. Uh, he's got really good single target DPS with Sharut. Uh, I just think he's really good against attack meta. Because they're all slow. And... And Shroot has an amazing AoE attack on him. So, just the amount of AoE on his kit is just super good. Uh, he's not too... Like, he's got decent DPS. He's got decent health. Same with Shroot. So, he's not S tier, but... Uh, that's kind of why I have him in A tier. Just, like, tons of AoE and decent single target damage. So, you can kind of work around that pretty well. Especially with Bantha now. Fat tank. Front uh, guarding for these two, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, I moved them up to A just because all the AOE. Uh, next up, we got B tier. Like I said before, these guys probably aren't far off from A tier. Um, they're just not quite as good. Like, you could probably argue either way. Like, certain people can move up and certain people can move down. But this is just my opinion. So first up, we got Lando. Uh, who got a pretty decent buff. Uh, his cooldown timer. Sorry. Uh, what did it... Was it like 30-something? Yeah, it was 35 to 26. So, like, 7 seconds. Which, basically, you're using his ability mostly as much as possible anyways. Uh, one of the big things with Lando is it's more or less what your card levels are rather than what he is. So, if you have nice card levels, he's pretty good. But, even up... I think he fits in B pretty well, just because, one, the randomness of what you get, you don't always get what you want right away, and sometimes you just end up shuffling it to the back, which kind of sucks. And I used to, like, talk about how the 1 and 2 energy wasn't nice. Like, you wanted to always get 2, but if you always got 2, it would be super nice, but if you always got 1, it kind of hurt. But now you can get it off a couple extra times in a match. Uh, I just think that... You're not really shuffling your cards. You're just like, okay, I just want new cards to get more energy. So, it was really close to moving him up to A. Uh, but I just think he's a little bit too luck and card dependent to be there. That's the only reason he's not there. Uh, next up, we have Anakin. To be honest, I think I might have dropped him a little bit too low. But, uh, it really hurts him against melee, the whole stun thing. Uh, he kind of needed it because just the oppression he had against melee heroes just sucked. The problem is, they took away that. Like, he's still decent against melee heroes, but he's still shitty against range. Uh, they made him a little bit easier to play because they made it so when you use your ability, you don't just stop and stand still. Which is nice, but I think when they, t uh, maybe, like, give him extra, like, do it 50% instead of 40%. And then maybe give him a little extra health to deal with the range dudes. So that's kind of why I dropped him so far is... He used to be super strong against melee. Well, he's still pretty decent. Uh, but he still has problems with range, guys. Unless unless you can charge up your stun and get in there a lot. But it's still tough for him. So I dropped him in a fair bit. He still has a really good set bonus. Uh, he might rebound next week. But like I said, or next uh, tier list. The difference between A and B is pretty mini school at the moment. So... It's tough to go from there. Uh, next up, we got a big mover. Cool. Uh, he used to be at the bottom of my list. I just, like, I thought he was trash. Um, big changes was the BB-8. Um, having him three energies is a lot more useful. And also having him be able to take over people a lot quicker. is really nice. Uh, you basically have to pay attention. Uh, I think the biggest thing with Poe is kind of like Jin, is his biggest counter is that uh, pressure against him can hurt him. Uh, where Jin has incredible melee DPS and power to help her out, Poe doesn't really have much. Like all his shit costs, uh, all his airstrikes cost less. But the problem is, if you put pressure on him, he has to use his airstrikes on defending rather than offense, so he has a hard time pushing. So it's one of those things. He can either be really good if he can keep the pressure off of him and like get BB-8 up and kind of playable. And then he can use his uh, cheap strikes to like actually attack buildings and stuff. 
So I think he's pretty decent at the moment. Uh, I think he's got counters, which is why he's not A tier. As he's hard to defend. And he's super squishy and does no damage. So he's basically a walking pylon, but... That's why he's in B. We'll see how it goes. Uh, next up, we have Bodhi. Uh, biggest problem with Bodhi... Like, everybody knows he's great. Tons of health, tons of energy. Uh, just the nurse ATRTs. Uh, I think he has a hard time pushing. At the moment. Like, with ATRTs being super strong, he's really good, but... It's one of those things, I don't think you should ever really lose as a Bodhi, but it's super tough to win. At the moment. Because... Like, motor turret's not very good. ATAP, meh. JNK is alright now, but it's not going to get you turrets most of the time unless you can keep up pressure. Which Bodhi has a hard time doing. Uh, and like, this tank's okay. That's nothing like right home about. And that's basically all your tech units. So like, this turret's great with him, but turrets don't get, this turret doesn't get a tower. That's why he's fell. Uh, I still think like you never lose with him, but it's super tough to win. Finally, uh, my most hated, everybody knows this, uh, Hera. I think the biggest thing knocking her right now is... You just get pressured a lot. And if you don't have your ability up, it can be tough. Uh, I think she's, like, energy, she got tons of AoE, energy's nice, chopper's super good. It's just, I don't think she's as good in the meta right now as before. Uh, Chopper only stunning one tech kind of hurts because there's always like multiple techs coming at you. And I think she has a... It's like, it's really tough for me because I think I overvalue Hera a lot. So I ended up putting her down here. But I, mean, I don't have much bad thing to say about Hera. She's just a little bit weak in the meta at the moment. That's why she's in B. Alright, finally is C and D. Uh, I think these guys just fall off super hard compared to the rest of them. Uh, so these guys are... Kind of like A and B where they're super close. And it's just how my opinion on them why they're here. So, go on. First of all, we got Leia. Um, her new passive is nice. I think it's way better than the old one. But it still doesn't do too much. Biggest problem with Leia, everybody knows what she's going to do. Run up, drop units on turret. Uh... Basically, all you do, everybody, I don't think anybody's not running Bomber on Dark Side. It's just too good at the moment. Uh, so when Leia runs up, you just bomb her. It's like, as soon as she drops shit, just bomb the shit out of it. Uh, and that's why she's down here, because that's all she does. And Bomber just wrecks it. Uh, if you can catch him without Bomber, and you can drop your units on a turret, she's super good. But that's a big if. Uh, next up. We have Ezra. Uh, he dropped a fair amount just because the thing with Ezra was Kanan was super good. He would like deflect a whole bunch of shit. Uh, now they're, everybody's using Spider Droid. Everybody has like Riot Troopers. There's just a lot of melee heroes running around as well. Uh, so his deflect just isn't as good anymore. Uh, and Ezra's more like more or less just an all in guy. Uh, his AoE is a little bit hard to use, doesn't do that much damage, and his passive is a little tough to get off well. So that's why he fell. Uh, it's kind of one of those things like with Yoda, right? Where it's like you're going all in, and it's tough to defend once you do, but Yoda has like dodge. Well, Ezra's like, okay, I want to take damage. Just doesn't work out. Um, next up, we got Luke. Um, big thing is Kenobi started to fall because of Rey, and everybody's using tech units on Dark Side, so he's just kind of useless. Um, thing with Luke is he's kind of good defensively, kind of good offensively, but just nothing like he's great at. Uh, his passive is kind of useless now because nobody's going to use Kenobi. Uh, I actually kind of like his ability. How it, uh, it's a nice little 20 second thing, do a little bit more damage, but it doesn't make up for the fact that he's, like, not good at anything right at the moment. 
It's like, oh yeah, I can deflect, but so can Kenobi and Rey. We're ten times better. Uh, next up, we have D tier, uh, Sabine. She's just like, there's no grenade units that are coming out, or explosives, sorry. Uh, her melee attack, I think, is bugged. Like, sometimes her dark saber doesn't go off, and even if she does, sometimes she, like, jumps out of range of attacks, so you have to move around. Uh, I think Fen's kind of decent, but not to make up for the fact that just how, like, low damage she is, uh, low health, and how buggy she is. I mean, she's not good at the moment. And then finally, we got Cassian. Um, I say this a lot. Uh, sniper units in games like these are really tough to balance correctly. It's because it's a fine tipping point between when they become OP and when they become, like, super underrated. Or, uh, like, just super shitty. And at the moment, he's just super shitty. He doesn't have enough damage or he doesn't have enough attack speed. Uh, he doesn't have enough damage to deal with all the tech stuff. Uh, K2 can't save him with a taunt from all the tech stuff. Uh, like, K2's got nice AoE, but he doesn't have that much health. So he's just the bottom of the barrel right now. Um, I'm just gonna go over the uniques a little bit. <coughs> As I changed up a fair amount for the light side. Um, like BB-8. Uh, like I said before, less energy takes over things quicker is actually useful. Uh, especially with all the tech running around. Uh, you can catch people off guard if they're not paying attention. Uh, so he's actually decent now. Uh, I raised up Fen. I think he should always be used. This is probably a long time coming. Uh, his explosive rocket's super good. And so I think that was just my error. Like, things that being sucked, so he was bad. Uh, so he moved up. I moved Kanan down because, like I said before, I just can't deflect a whole bunch of stuff anymore. There's a lot of ways to deal with them that weren't around. Um, I lowered U-Wing. I probably should have done this last time. Uh, I think most bodies are going to be running T-70. It's like, you can still use T-70 U-Wing if you want. But T-70 is just going to overtake it for most things. Uh, OB, like I said, everybody's trying to dodge Ray, So, he's not useful. You can still use him if you really want, but... Like, uh, I hate Cody. I was going to put him in D tier, but... Some people like him, I guess. I just don't. Uh, and the Millennium Falcon, I moved up. I still don't like using Millennium Falcon in T-70, but... I think it opens you up to a lot of stuff. Like, split-pushing stuff, and you being down on energy. But... The meta right now is everybody's pushing into one lane, so I guess it works out alright. Alright, now to the dark side. Oop. All right, we'll go there. Uh, first up, we got Maul. Um, like everybody knows about Maul. It's fairly tanky with his passive. You can do some crazy stuff with the re uh, revive. His ability is super good. Nobody's r running that many stuns, so it's hard to get him off for you. And he's got nice stats all around. And then his unique is just super good. It's super tanky. For two energy, super tanky. Does tons of damage. And you can play it anywhere. So I don't really need to go on about Jamal. Everybody knows Jamal's the best hero right now. By far. Super easy. So yeah, I won't go on much about him. Uh, next up we got Kylo. Even levels, he's not too bad. Uh, like I said before, it's like level 6 rage is insane. Uh, his rage is super good. He just has a strong kit all around. Uh, freezing people. And then being able to do 30% more damage, especially with rage. He's just super strong. Wipes out a whole bunch of stuff. Um, one of the big drawbacks for him is set bonus sucks ass. <laughs> it's like barely usable. You don't even have to worry about it. I just think he has a super strong kit, especially as there's not many tech options to uh, for to get around his freeze. 
So, yeah. Does plenty of AoE damage. Uh, hard to kill. Does tons of damage. That's why he's up here. I think everybody knows that. Like, Kyle and Maul are pretty easy to say. Uh, next up, we got Bulba. He was kind of hurt by the ATRTs. Uh, because you couldn't really use ATST as much. Or as easily, I guess. You couldn't just, like, backspawn it and laugh. Um, but he's still... Other than Phasma, I think he's got the most health for a ranged hero. Uh, it does tons of damage to heroes. Got tons of AoE. Uh, tons of survivability with being able to jump over middle. middle, And his rocket does a fair amount of damage. And can be used at a pretty big area. And everybody knows Slave 1. It's like, if you got organic, Slave 1's just going to destroy everything. Uh, so yeah, that's S tier for uh, Dark Side. I only have I like to put up four heroes for S tier, but the thing is, like those three heroes for Dark Side are just so much better than anything else at the moment. So that's why I only have three for S tier. Uh, A and B tier are kind of the same as Rebels, where like anybody could probably move up on preference. Up or down, but this is just how I have it. There's a couple in here that I wasn't sure about, so we'll go over them as we go. Uh, first up, we got Vader. He's so much CC, uh, super tanky. Uh, he actually has decent organic units to give health to now. Uh, it can be tough with Ray, which is why probably why I don't have him up in S tier. If it wasn't for Ray, I probably would have had Vader in S tier. Uh, I can't play him or shit. <laughs> I pull towers all over the place, but I think he's really good. Aff is really good. Uh, so yeah. I might overvalue him a little bit, but I think he's super good. Uh, next up we got Thrawn. He's just so flexible with Thrawn. One of the big things, and... Flexible and he can punish. I don't think anybody punishes mistakes as hard as Thrawn. There's been games where it's just like you make one mistake and also it's like, yeah, my generator's gone. Alright, see ya. Um, with his ability to make stormtroopers super good, uh, his passive is, if you're good with it, he just does so much damage. And his ability is super good. Like, you don't even have to use that many organic units. Like, really, you could have all tech units and just use FO Stormtroopers. It's like, as soon as you kill them or get them low, just drop these guys as your ability. It's like, even if Ray takes them over, it's not a big deal. Because you're just making Stormtroopers as well, right? So, you can always use your passive just on, or your ability just on those guys. So, um, one of the reasons I don't have them in S tier is just because all the AoE just counters them super hard. Like, Partisan, Grenadier, T70... It can be tough to get a big swarm going with him, but if you do, it's basically game over. Um, next up, we got Krennic. Uh, shitty unique. A super high level. But, you just... Um, with, like, the set bonus... I don't know how many people actually get it up to 15%, but, like, 10% is still pretty big. 10% is, like, 2 seconds. Uh, especially with his, like... His uh, consecutive attack thing. He just always has like super high single target DPS. It's insane. Uh, just has a few AOE things in there and you set. Uh, and his extra energy helps though. It's basically like having two set bonuses. Because what is the Separatist? Yeah. Separatist set like set 8 is like less than. So basically you get more energy than the opponent. And you also have... Like, super continuously... <laughs> continuously great single target DPS. Is what I was going to say. So that's why he's uh, A tier. Biggest problem with him is... Lacks AoE and lacks a decent unique. Uh, next up we got Phasma. She has some bugs. So we're just going to ignore those right now. Because they sometimes happen with T-Rex. And like her auto attack, she'll like, walk up to stuff. Um, so, I was thinking about moving her down to B for the, just because of the bugs, but we'll leave her in A for now. 
Uh, she just... She has great, de like, defense. Her defense is super good with T-Rex. T-Rex is great when people cross the line. Uh, 400% AOE is pretty big. And if you're... If you plan it right, getting, uh, the follow-up attack is really good, so... She's got strong AoE. She's got super strong stats. She's the tankiest ranged character in the game. Decent DPS. However, her set bonus sucks, but... Um, basically, what Dengar wants to be. Uh, she can run into problems if people are really defensive. Which is why she's not S2 for me. Uh, next up, we got Kallus, who's falling a little bit. Uh, biggest thing with Kallus is the top three guys, I guess, top three out of four guys I have for light side meta just do tons of damage. Uh, so he kind of gets wrecked by damage. It's not the healthiest dude in the game. Yogurt kind of sucks, but thing is, he just does so much damage to units and his stun... Once you get used to it, it's super strong. Uh, so he just does tons of AoE damage to units. And just tons of AoE da damage in general. Uh, so I still think he's uh, good in ATRs. Especially against uh, the ATRTs. Because you can stun the ATRTs and you just like plow them down. The biggest reason why I dropped from S tier is just because of the light side meta. Where it's just a whole bunch of guys that just do crazy damage. Because he's got to kind of put himself in harm's way to get through. Uh, next up, we got Bisk. Uh, one of the big problems with boss, IG-88 sucks. Don't use it. Uh, but other than that, like, net's super good against any melee hero. Uh, if you can get kills, it's basically over. You just have such a good advantage if you can get a couple kills in a game and get this off. Uh, he's not as good against ATRTs, but they nerfed that, so his explosive shot is going to be a little bit better against them. Biggest thing why Boss isn't S tier anymore is I think there's a fair amount of guys that just. Either don't push up or aren't affected by his net as much. So that's kind of why he's here. Uh, next up, we got Cad. This was... I went back and forth between Cad and Emperor. Who should be the final guy in A tier. Um, I ended up going with Cad. Uh, I think one of the biggest things with Cad is he's super hard to play. Which is why you don't see more of them. Uh, Aurora sucks. Like, her AI is just dumb. Uh, he's got a great passive. A set bonus. And he just does tons of AoE damage. Uh, and... Thing is with Cat, there's a lot going on with him. Like, you need to die in a good spot. Uh, you need to be good at switching weapons and being on the right target. But, like, uh, I know Pandango plays him incredibly well. And I think the only reason why Cat, that's, you don't see a lot more Cats is he's super tough to play well. That's why he's here. And we'll move on to B. Like I said, this is kind of, personally, you can argue for these guys to be in A, but I just think they have a little bit more weaknesses than the guys in A, and that's why they're down here. First up, we'll start with Emperor. Um, like I said, I had a hard time deciding which ones I want to, between him and Cad. Uh, they both do massive AoE. Um, I just think Cad is a little safer. One, because he can jump over the mid thing. And two, even if he does die, he, he takes out a lot of stuff with him. So Emperor's squishy, but he does tons of damage. Um, Royal Guards are decent. You gotta get him charged up, like running at people, and they do okay. It's really tough for me to put him in B, but I just think at the moment, it's just a little bit too squishy to be in A. Uh, next up, we got Seventh Sister. 
people don't like using brother. I think brother's great. Um, but I don't really play much Seven Sister in ones. Uh, she's super fast. Uh, like Thrawn, she can punish hard, but she's weak. She's a lot weaker to AOE than Thrawn is, I think. Because you gotta get the droids up. Uh, they buffed her a little bit ago where you get droids faster. But it still sucks running to like a Partisan or like T-70 or something like that. Um, I think she's a little bit too squishy and a little bit too susceptible to be in A tier. But I think she's great at hit and run style stuff. Uh, she can take your turret in the blink of an eye. I guess I should finish that off. But I just think her melee attack's a little bit low and her health's a little bit too low to be an A. That's what she's in B. Like she's not terrible, but I don't think she's that great either. Uh, next up, we got Tarkin. We've got a little bit better with ATRT nerfs. Um, I was thinking about dropping him, but I think with his ability, when TK, and with a whole bunch of Banthas running around, he's still pretty good. Uh, I still think more, uh, the cheap Tarkin decks are still pretty, is still crazy good. It's just, you can only play in that one way. It's just mostly, like, if you T-70 your stuff down, it's like, okay, whatever, I'll just respawn it all. Um, I just think he has a little bit of a tough time pushing at the moment. Uh, he did have huge problems with ATRT, but I think he's a little bit better now. So, that's why I have him in B tier. Uh, next one we got Grievous. Uh, he's also one of those guys that is bugged. Uh, his ability doesn't always go off. But he's kind of like Lando, I think. It's more, it's not about him really per se, it's about what your cards are at. So if we're talking about like even level cards, he's just not as great. Like he gives buffs to all his tech units, but you have to use tech and that can cause problems. I just, to be fair, like he's just not his hero. He doesn't do much DPS, he doesn't have much health. His ability kind of, it's meh. It's high cooldown. So that's kind of why he's in B. His character is just not as good. Uh, next up, we got GI. Who jumps up a lot because of his change. Uh, Brother's actually decent now. His boomerang can kind of clear, can clear most stuff, or at least do a ton of damage, which makes him a little bit better. It still sucks because you can't just drop him in front of a tower, but you don't have to worry about like the organic thing anymore. Uh, Grand Inquisitor's new passive is so much fun. Uh, you can do some crazy damage with him. Uh, the biggest problem with him is he's got to get in and attack stuff. So it leaves him vulnerable. It's kind of like Kallus uh, without the stun, basically. It's like you've got to put yourself in harm's way for him to be super effective, uh, which is why he's in B. You can do some crazy damage, but uh, in the end, it's just it can be tough to pull off. So that's why he's in B. Definitely better than he was before by a lot, though. Uh, next up, we have Dooku. Dooku's a little weird for me. He might deserve A tier, or he might just like bum out. I think one of the biggest problems is the synergy between him and his unique isn't that great. Also, the targeting on his unique is kind of weird. Um, he's really good against melee heroes and melee cards. Uh, however, there's not too many light side ones that are that big of a threat for melee cards. Like, Tells don't do that much damage, so it's not too big of a deal. Like, you just stand in them and laugh. I think one of the biggest ones you gotta watch out for, like, honor guards. Other than that, it's more or less like the melee thing sucks for heroes. So he's good against melee heroes, but... Thing is, like, you don't have a taunt, so it's not like they just... If melee heroes don't attack him, it's kind of useless. I just... One, I don't think a lot of people have figured out the optimal way to play him. I think he might end up rising. 
Because this kit's good. The bomber's pretty good. It does a fair amount of damage. It's just kind of like barge. It's slow and you kind of got to prepare for it. Which might not be the best thing in this kind of meta. Uh, so, Dooku's one of the really big iffy ones right now. So, I just kind of put him in the middle. Uh, unfortunately, I know that kind of sucks. But, eventually I think he'll get to A tier. Um, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, okay, that's it for A and B. Uh, next up, we got C tier. This one's kind of like a special place. This one's just for Hux. Mostly because... One, like, I, don't, I hate his unique. Some people like it. Uh, I just think it's too squishy, and it can be tough to use. If you get the timing down perfect, it's okay. But it can be rough. Um, thing is, like, Hux is kind of like Poe. It's kind of like a pylon. Uh, however, like, these guys do insane damage with them. Executioner's insane with them. Uh, if you can use certain cards, he's super good. But the problem is all these cards get counted by Ray, which hurts a lot. Um, like, Riot Troopers, Executioner's insane. Uh, this guy's super... Assault Troop... Assault Stormtrooper is super underrated with him. So. He's kind of like in no man's land right now. Where he can be really good at certain points. But he can also be really bad against some people. Or in certain situations. So if they release more FO cards. I think he can start being better. Uh, if they nerf Ray. You'll probably shoot up a lot. Because a lot of other stuff you can kind of play around with. Um, but right now, I'm just going to... I have him in C just because he's kind of... He's got too many weaknesses to be up higher. Um, next up. In the bottom tier. In the D tier. Ah, uh, we have Dengar. Um, four alarm's Okay. It's really hard to get on the passive leaders with Forlom, which was one of the big things with uh, Dengar before. Um, its passive is basically useless. It's like, unless you let a tower go down in the first, like, minute, it's hard to come back from it. Um, it's grenade, it's short range, it doesn't do that much damage. Um, his auto attacks, you get stuck in the animation forever. It really sucks. Um, basically, Phasma's better than him in every way. Uh, so, like, he's just not good. Like, low stats. Uh, no passive, basically. Uh, his skill's not very good. Uh, Forlom's still pretty decent. His range on his zap really hurts, though. So, that's why he's down here. And then, we have 40th Vader. I thought about putting him with Hux, but I think Hux is better than 40th. Um, 40th still has decent AoE attacks, but his health is pretty low for melee. Uh, his, his ability is decent. It just doesn't kill anything anymore. That's the problem. Like They need to raise this to like 300% and be okay. Uh, it's hard to get off his passive. And then even now, it doesn't do that as much. And he doesn't have any unique, so. There's just, like, so many better options than 40th Vader at the moment. Uh, so, yeah, that's my tier list. Uh, I won't go over the uniques because I don't think anything really changed for Dark Side uniques. Um, finally. Oh, sorry. We will go over my failed five, uh, top five heroes. Maul, just like unique is insane. Uh, super, can be super hard to kill if you're good with them. Uh, his skills, really good. And like his name says, he just mauls people. Uh, Padme is kind of in the same boat as Maul. Uh, super good unique. Does tons of damage, uh, hard to kill. Uh, super good ability. And especially with all the decent, like, 
tanky stuff up front for late side. I think she's just super good. Uh, next up, we got Kylo. Uh, basically, like, his unique is super good. Uh, it's like super big AoE, hard to kill. And then his freeze is really nice as well. Uh, not many people can, like, dodge it as... Or get it, like, deal with it as properly. Uh, next up, we got 40 Luke. Um, he's just quick. You can do some crazy stuff with him. Uh, he's really good against tech. He's really good at protecting ATRTs, Banthas, stuff like that. And he does tons of damage. And then finally, we got Ray. Uh, she basically just changed the meta. Like, you either have to run uh, a deck specifically against her, or you gotta play around her super hard. So, those are my top five. Uh, this video kind of dragged on a fair bit. Um, I'm sorry for that. I haven't done one in a while, so I kind of went over things a little bit more th than usual. Uh, again, you will be able to find this document uh, here. I will put up the website in the comments. Uh, it will also be on my Twitch page as well. Um, so check that out. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, leave any comments below. To me, this one was a lot more personal preference, I think, than a lot of the other ones. So, there might be a little bit of stuff that you guys don't agree with. So, we can talk that out. Uh, thanks for tuning in, guys. I hope this was informational for you. Uh, and hopefully you guys didn't fall asleep. So, thanks for watching. Uh, hopefully I'll do another one next time there's a big patch. It won't take me so long to get it out. So, thanks for tuning in, and I will talk to you guys later.